What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Curry chicken with oven roasted butternut squash. Yeah, at first. You're gonna love this one, man. Stay tuned. It's real, real flavors in all your backside today. Boom, bam! In my bowl, I've got two butternut squash, which has been cubed. A three quarter inch, about a two centimeter cube. And to that, there's about four cups of that in there. We're gonna go in with a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I'm using sea salt, you can use whatever salt you want. We're gonna need some black pepper. And the full list of ingredients will be listed down below. Go on with that black pepper in there. I've got some of my curry powder and to help with the sweetness a bit of brown sugar. Now we're going to go and give that a toss and then we're going to put it on a roasting tray and roast it off in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But before we do so, you got to add some garlic. And the reason for the garlic and the curry powder in here is later on when I add it to the curry chicken, I don't want it diluting the flavor because in my humble opinion, a good curry should have enough garlic and I'm just smashing it with the back of my knife and it should have that lovely breakdown of all those spices which makes up that curry. So give that a good mix now and then into the oven. Just move it around on that tray there. Make sure everything is a single layer. And put some space in between if you can. Scrape all that niceness down onto the pan here. And into the oven, 400 degrees, middle rack. Single layer, eh? Single layer. Let's season and marinate the chicken. It's something you would have seen me do countless times right here on the channel. And I've got one chicken, which I cut up into pieces, an entire chicken. So you got the leg, the back, yeah, we use the entire chicken, the wings, the chicken breast, everything, cut up into serving size pieces. And uh, you would have seen me do this before. First thing first, we need some salt. And it's a very basic, a very basic marinade. We got that salt, need some black pepper, Caribbean green seasoning, and the recipe for that, actually, if you go to CaribbeanPod.com and just look at the niceness up in there, you see that? I make my Caribbean green seasoning with olive oil, which means it retains the color, that's natural color, as well as, ooh, the flavors in there of those herbs, man. A tablespoon and a half of that goes into there. Um, if you go to CaribbeanPod.com, on the very top, you're going to see recipe cards. I have a downloadable version of that for you guys. Very simple, and I like adding a tomato, and I'm just going to cut it up into small pieces. And the tomato will help with the gravy later on, and the acidity from the tomato will help balance off all the flavors later on as well. So that's it. Salt, black pepper, Caribbean green seasoning, that tomato, and all you would want to do now is give that a little mixy mix. Just to make sure everything is nice and combined in there. And you should smell the kitchen at this point. Boy, does it ever smell good. The pump, well, I'm using butternut squash, but if you wanted to, to use pumpkin or any sort of squash, you can certainly rock that in the oven there. Man, does it ever smell good. So what we're going to do, typically I would suggest you season the chicken as I just did and you marinate it for a couple hours. But we're going to jump right into cooking. I'm on hungry. And I cannot pick this, you know, so I'm going to sort myself out with a nice little food. You understand? So let's get cracking. In my pot there, I've got three tablespoons of olive oil. If you want to use vegetable oil, coconut oil, whatever oil you want to use, use it. If you want to cut back on the amount of oil that you use here, because remember, the reason why I can stretch through the oil a little bit is because I took off all the skin and fat from that chicken. But if you want to cut back on the amount of oil, use a non-stick pan. To that oil, medium heat, a medium onion. Just diced up. A 
about seven cloves of garlic, and I've got one scotch bonnet pepper, seeds and everything. Now remember, we spoke about this before. If you want to cut back some of the heat, now I'm putting an entire scotch bonnet pepper in there. If heat is not your thing, obviously you don't need to put that in there. Let's go a little bit deeper with the black pepper maybe, if that is your thing, right? Um, with the scotch bonnet pepper, the seeds that you're seeing there, I don't know if you guys can see it. If you remove that, you can control some of the heat. If you can't have access to scotch bonnet pepper, use whatever sort of pepper you have access to. A habanero will be beautiful in there. Heat on medium, and we're gonna quickly fry that up there. A couple minutes later, and you'll start seeing some little brown edges on the garlic, on the onion. Medium heat, as I said. So here's where we're gonna go in with our curry powder, and you will use your favorite brand. I'm using my little concoction that I have here and you need two tablespoons, I'm using a teaspoon if you want it. two heaping tablespoons of that and this is why I added all that olive oil in there because I want to be able that, that curry when you add it's going to suck up all that oil in there so but again if you want to cut back on that by all means do so now what we're going to do medium heat we're going to allow that to toast sort of wet toast in that oil there and what it's going to do it's going to release the flavors of all the spices which makes up a good curry powder. That said, if you're doing this gluten-free, read the label of your curry powder because some of them, and we've talked about this before, tend to have flour as a filler and a thickener in there. It will go darker as you notice now. Now earlier when I was talking about the Caribbean green seasoning, that green seasoning is pretty much a blend or a puree of all the herbs along with garlic and seasoning peppers and all that that we tend to marinate or fish or, or, or meat or seafood even vegetarian dishes it, it's that go-to sort of marinade for everything now what we did there we, we allow that curry to bloom now we're going to cook out the rawness so to do so we're going to go in with a, a third of a cup of water and that's going to cook out the rawness now it's going to be come a thaw, sort of a thick slurry and the, the goal here is to cook out the rawness of the curry so later on at the end you don't get that raw curry taste at the back of your tongue you know it's, it's very offensive you don't want to be eating curry like that I'm going in now with some anchar masala check your West Indian or Caribbean grocery store you will get that and I've got some roasted jeera or cumin some roasted cumin powder now if you can't source the anchor masala just double up on the amount of cumin that goes in here and my heat is still on medium as I said what we want to do that same water that we just added there we want to burn off that water because that is what's going to intensify the curry taste now and in doing so we're going to go back to the oil where we first started with to help get back to that oil and you can see it's starting to show up already what I did was I cranked up my heat to high now because this is where we're going to add the marinated chicken to the pot. So we're just going to make sure all that liquid, you want a sort of a thick between a paste and a slurry on the bottom here. So yeah, open up the window, stay house and put that fan on. If it's winter time, your entire house is going to be smelling like curry, yeah? So if you want to go outside in the garage and do so, do so. Wifey will boss your head if you stink up she house. All that liquid has burnt off now and you see the oil that we started off with. So here's where we're going to start adding all that seasoned chicken to the pot. Remember the heat must be on high, yeah? And the idea now is to move that around to pick up all that curry goodness from the bottom of the pot and sort of sear or seal the chicken, coat the chicken pieces with it. My heat is on high, yeah? Remember, high heat. We want to really take advantage of all that flavor on the bottom there that we created. I'm going to put my lid on now and let that go. I'm going to turn my heat down to medium high and let that go for about two or three minutes and it's going to sprout its own juices. 35 minutes later and the butternut squash just came out of the oven there. Notice the sort of charred edges it's nice and tight it's holding its shape and everything else and i kid you not it is the most amazing smell in this kitchen right now so we're going to set that aside and then we're going to add it to the pot near the end and the reason why we roasted it off because i want it to hold its shape 
in the curry chicken so we know we're eating curry chicken with pumpkin not a big old mash sort of slurry in. and you know if you put the pump the squash or the pumpkin early in there without roasting it in my humble opinion all you're getting is pumpkin tal curry and I ain't want that I know I don't want that it's been about six minutes with the lid on you see all that liquid has naturally spouted up there you notice how the chicken pieces shrank which means it's tightening it's coming together it is cooking so what we're gonna do now is crank up the heat to burn off all that liquid to intensify the curry's flavor then we're gonna add some braising liquid in there to create that nice sauce can't have curry without a nice sauce took about three minutes on that high heat but you notice we have the oil showing back there and look at that remember that tomato we added in the earlies you see how it melted down and helping us create that thickness on the bottom there? Later on, although we'll thank me for that now, since we have that heat on high, what we're gonna do now in the same bowl where we marinated the chicken in, we want to pick up the rest of the marinade. So we're gonna go in with a cup and a half of water. We're gonna scrape the bottom off here. Now, if your chicken looking a little pale, it is because there are eight light bulbs over this right now when I film I have my filming stuff on there so don't say oh gosh Chris how the chicken looking pale so you need a little time no you don't need no time stop that all I need to stop that bring that up to a boil reduce it to simmer let it cook for about four minutes then we'll add the pumpkin now here is where we scrape all that pumpkin goodness I keep saying pumpkin but it's butternut squash but the whole idea is, you know what I'm talking about, right? You're gonna scrape all of that niceness in there. Try not to break them up too much. And then what we're gonna do, gently top down that into the sauce, into that gravy, and let that pieces, those pieces of oven roasted butternut squash just suck up all that curry goodness there. I'm telling you, you're eating this, rice roti whatever you decide it is sliced bread do you think i ain't hating because there are times when you know desperate times you have to to use what you have but we just want that to go in there now and the sweetness from that pumpkin and remember we repeated the flavors with the garlic and the curry powder and everything in there as well too but keep an eye on it you want gravy try not to burn it now eh? turn the heat down to medium just to be safe Four minutes later, after I added the um, butternut squash there, that gravy is going to thicken up. So if you think it looking soup-like, if I just move it, you notice how it's getting thick and the residual heat in this pot. This is a cast iron pot glazed, but it will thicken up more. Heat off. Taste it for salt first though, eh? And now, a little shadow benny in there. If you can't get shadow benny, a little cilantro. If you can't get either of them, you know, settle for some little parsley or something, a little greenery in there, just to brighten it up a little bit, you know. I'm going to switch to a tablespoon now because I want to be gentle. I ain't trying to mash up everything. You notice how, how thick it already got? I was telling all you, all you didn't believe me. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. And if you go to a West Indian store, you're asking for shadow bending. That's the last thing that I put in there because some of all you don't understand the kind of flavor that bring in. Asian stores and Hispanic stores may call it culantro. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. At first, at first, I'm telling you, search the internet, YouTube, everything. But credit, I have to give credit where credit is due. My boy Stuart out in Ottawa told me about pumpkin in curry chicken. Now, I know my one is a little bit different than his, but I have to give the man credit. Anyhow, friends, always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Give this one a try. Use that butternut squash, use that pumpkin, any sort of squash that you have, it will work great. You're going to love this one, but taste it for salt and adjust it.